Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch the Fire Twice, I'm Joshua, and today is day 8 and 9 of the 12 Days of Candles. This series features a mix of new favorites and returning classics across a variety of brands, price points, and fragrance families, all appropriate for buying and burning during and beyond the holiday season. There will be new 12 Days of Candles videos throughout December and into now January, so be sure to stay tuned to see if your favorite makes the calendar. One of the reasons we're doing a day eight and combined video is one, I wanna get through these, wanna get these out there because I know folks are likely anxious to get into some spring scents as we're diving right into 2023 for the new year, but also because there are two scents specifically that are very similar in the sense that they are both pear-based fragrances. So I figured let's throw them together and really talk about pear in fragrance, almost like my Name That Note series, which you can watch my first Name That Note video here on Plum from the Autumn. This is almost like a mini version of that, though it is a 12 Days of Candle video. Today's in-depth sniff reviews will be on Homeworks by Slacken & Co, Partridge in a Pear Tree, as well as Bath & Body Works by Slacken & Co, Cranberry Pear Bellini. But first, if you're new to Touch Fire Twice, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for fine home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. If you want to learn more about what I do, why I do it, and how I do it, you can check out my website at touchthefiretwice.com. But for now, let's dig into all things pear. So you may not be aware, pear is actually in many ways considered a winter fruit. In fact, the USDA considers December to be National Pear Month. And so let's talk a little bit about the a few of the varieties of pear, because I think we all are familiar with pear. It's a very, very common fruit, at least in North America, very common for folks to find that basically year-round at your grocery store these days. In my research, I learned that pears ripen best off of the tree, so they are harvested when they are mature but unripe. And today I want to very quickly talk through four varieties of pears because I think it's it's good to know you know what we're sniffing specifically just in life so that you know what to buy when you want to use it in a different recipe whether you're baking it or poaching it or using it in a salad or just eating it raw as a snack but specifically I think it's good to know since most home fragrance isn't going to call out what type of pear it is or what pear fragrance it is it might just be a generic pear Sometimes I think it's there's still potentially some differences, certainly in the whole world of pear fragrances. And one other quick tip that I, that I found in my research, the best way to check for ripeness, because the different varieties of pears have different skin types, different colors, and you can't always look at visual cues for a marker on ripeness, they say check the neck. So you press right at the base of the stem, right at the neck of the pear, to see if it gives to gentle pressure. And if it does, then it's ripe, juicy, and ready to eat. So the four pears that I have learned about, <laughs> that let's learn about together. So the Anjou is truly your all-purpose pear. Juicy, subtle sweetness, hints at a bit of almost like a refreshing lemon-lime flavor. Because it is an all-purpose pear, it can be used in many applications. And then the Bosque pear, also incredibly popular, has a more firm, dense flesh. So it really is ideal for broiling, baking, or poaching. They retain their shape and texture better than some of the other softer, creamier pears. And though they have a bit of a natural sort of baking spice profile to them, a bit of a cinnamon nutmeg, because of their strength, they hold up well to actual baking spices you may add into something that you're baking or poaching. Then there's the Comis pear, not quite as popular. Uh, one of the sweetest and juicy varieties, very soft, creamy flesh, because of that, it's more a snacking pear. You're not gonna cook with it as often as maybe your Bosque or potentially the Anjou. And finally, the Seckel pear, the smallest of all commercially grown pears. They're exceptionally sweet, they're small, they're sometimes almost a bite-sized morsel, they say, and they're sometimes called the sugar pears, so really just for snacking. So knowing that, let's dig into these two fragrances. So really excited about both of these. Again, they're really both Slack & Co fragrances. One through Homeworks, one was introduced through Bath & Body Works, in this Lacken & Co era that now continues to come back under the Bath & Body Works branding at Bath & Body Works. First, let's talk about the Homeworks candle, Partridge in a Pear Tree. I have here the 2022 QBC Christmas in July pour and release. You see this has that sort of matte gold lid with the holiday pattern here. It is that thinner lid that we've seen throughout 2022. Your, your traditional wraparound label almost seems like kind of a painting of pears with a bit of snow. Traditional, simple, pretty, that works for me. Then it's also worth noting this scent originally came out in the 2018 Holiday Celebrations collection. This label was really fun, sort of this pinstripe with this metallic glitter label, this heavy yellow golden chrome lid with that scalloped edge. The first year or two they did some really nice 
scalloped edge collections. Some of their bakery collections had the scalloped edge. Their ice cream shop collection had that scalloped edge. Just a really small detail, but elevated makes it really fun and festive. This collection also had Over the River and Through the Woods, which has later come back as Spiced Balsam in the past couple of years. It had a trip down Peppermint Lane, and then it also had Vanilla Spice and Everything Nice. At the time, I had only purchased Over the River and Through the Woods, which I'm a big fan of, and the Partridge in a Pear Tree. The notes across the two releases, I believe these are maybe the only two times that these ones came out, uh, are the same. And so we'll dig into those. With homework, so they don't give you a scent story, so I can't read you, you know, a paragraph of what they want the scent to evoke. They just give you four notes. So we'll dig into those four notes. The other thing I'll say is the notes on the bottom are the same, you know, four years later. The fragrance, very much the same, has not really changed or evolved, which is good. This was a duo. I purchased two of them. It was somewhat light. This one I have not burned, but I burned the first one. It was somewhat light. The burn in the pool was messy. It took a long time to pull out. It was an uneven burn, as we've seen with many candles throughout 2022 with Homeworks. But the scent is so wonderful that, that though I could have returned it to QVC, I didn't want to because it's so unique. It's such a special scent and I wanted to try to make it work. And it was mm, barely acceptable. But again, I love the scent. So I, I stuck with this second one. Notes on this, poached pear, tonka bean, red berries, and heliotrope. This fragrance overall is, I would call it a fruity gourmand. It's not just fruity, it's not gourmand in a literal, you know, baked pears with creme anglaise and crunchy oat streusel on top, though that, that would be really nice. This is a conceptual fruity gourmand, though it does lean a bit bakery with this pear, and we'll get into the heliotrope. For me, this pe this pear is poached maybe in brandy or white wine. It's a bit of kind of a spiced, juicy, deep, kind of a nectary juiciness. It's not your fresh, bright, tangy juiciness that you sometimes will get from a pear. It is that sweetened, concentrated, thickened pear juice, very soft. I think this is probably a Bosque pear because they are best for poaching and baking and they have those natural flavors or hints of cinnamon and nutmeg to them. Though I think this very much could have a little bit of a baking spice added to it, but you wouldn't notice, oh, this is heavy on cinnamon or heavy on nutmeg. It's, it doesn't lean, again, super, super edible gourmand, though it is pear-based. Getting into tonka bean, I think a lot of folks are familiar with tonka bean, or certainly it's in many fragrances. So you have seen the name, you've smelled it before. It is very similar to vanilla, though not exactly interchangeable. So a tonka bean is, it's actually a member of the pea family, and the grated seeds smell of sweet spice, vanilla, praline, almond, which sometimes can get kind of conflated with cherry, cherry and almond, that scent is, is quite similar in fragrance. It's warm and smooth. Compared to vanilla, there's also a bit more of like a sweetened hay or earth. Often it's just said tonka is it an earthier, less sweet vanilla, which is valid. But a little bit more specifically, uh, tonka will still be powerful and sensual. There's a milky sweetness balanced by a bit of almost a bitterness that a vanilla is not going to typically have. Very frequently used in gourmands like this or even amber scents to really add that earthy, sweet, spicy depth. And compared directly to vanilla, it's not a sugary, but of a neutral sweet with those cinnamon, almond, and hay notes. And certainly there is that vanilla in here, but it, it doesn't lean toward edible in the sense that it's not that creamy vanilla glaze or or custard or, or cream, but still gives you those same senses, the sweet, spicy, sensual. And red berries, there is a, I don't wanna say freshness, but there's a bright sharpness to this because it's not just that juicy nectary pear with a little bit of those spices and the sensual spicy sweetness of an earthy tonka. It's lifted up a bit by red berries. Now red berries can mean, you know, literal raspberry, cherry, red currants. In fine fragrance, red fruits, let's say kind of generically, are full-bodied, they're rich in their juices, Sometimes will give a sort of velvety or graceful sensation to the fragrance. Often used in floral fragrances, can kind of fade the intensity of woody notes. And here I just get a bright freshness that I wouldn't call juicy, but almost a bit of a, a sharper kind of like currant or underripe berry, but in a, in, a, in a way that makes sense because you're not trying to pop them in your mouth and make them super sweet. They just add maybe some of that tart, fruity edge. 
And finally, sort of the mystery note in here that really elevates this as a gourmand, conceptual, non-edible gourmand fragrance, and that is the heliotrope. So heliotrope is a floral, it's a flower. It originated in Peru, and it really is a gourmand floral, which there aren't many of those because florals are typically florals of, you know, herbaceous or green or dewy or feminine or fresh or strong or resinous even, but this really is your gourmand floral. The flowers themselves smell of bitter almond with heavy floral, distinct fruity cherry pie undertone. So when they say when you smell this flower, it really smells like almond or cherry pie sweetness. And then in fragrance, it's gonna add a creaminess, like a sweet, fluffy, powdery cloud. Marzipan, almost some caramel and vanilla, which really brings a gourmand beyond just what could be fruity or nutty from the almond or cherry. Truly that caramel, fluffy marzipan, which is sweetened, crushed almonds. And it can add just a little bit of like a peppery spice to some fragrances as well. So when you think of heliotrope, it's for me sometimes that mystery fragrance and certainly you know, most folks, I wasn't familiar with what heliotrope was before I, I got into researching fine fragrance. And you wouldn't expect a floral to bring creamy, fluffy, marshmallow-like cloud of marzipan, vanilla, cherry, almond, but that is what heliotrope does. And that to me is what really elevates this and ties this together beyond just being poached pear with some sweetness. You really have the elevation of the really three of the four scents. So you've got traditional, sweet, juicy, concentrated, supple pear. Again, I feel like with potions, maybe a little bit of a, a white wine. And the elevation really comes from the tonka bean versus your traditional vanilla, the red berries versus just a sweet raspberry or something like that, and the heliotrope as the surprise, fruity, gourmand, fluffy, rich floral. And though you wouldn't think of this as a floral fragrance, it is fruity gourmand. It's soft, it's comforting, and I love that it really does feel like, almost could be a year-round fragrance, works in autumn, works in holiday and into winter because it is fresh enough that it doesn't feel like you know, an October or November baked good. But there's enough of the sweetness and the pear in there that you could burn it there and it would be appropriate if you are a seasonal burner. But it really goes beyond that because it's just such a very truly beautifully elevated expression of pear. So big, big fan of partridge in a pear tree. I hope to see it come back and I hope the burn performance strength throw issues to be corrected in 2023. Here's hoping. Now let's move over to probably my all-time favorite pear fragrance, and that is Cranberry Pear Bellini by Slacken & Co. Now, for review purposes, I'll mostly be sniffing this 2022 release, still available in many or some stores into January 2023. This was in the sort of gift-wrapped collection, but the notes are very, very similar, and this is a Slacken & Co. classic because it was released, I want to say in 2010, this is a 2011 packaging, just that very classic traditional rectangular photo label with that silver edge. And as you can see on there, this photo label really is exactly what the scent brings. It is that fizzy, sweet, bright, fresh cranberry. And let's dig into the notes. So there's a bit of a sensor with this one. So the original one here on the bottom read, a bright blend of sparkling cranberry and juicy nectarine with sweet pear nectar and luscious black currant. Then when we moved on at some point through the years, because it's come out many, but not all years, that evolved into fizzy pear nectar, sparkling red cranberries, lush apricot, and tart black currant. So really what did they do? They added a couple of different adjectives to a few of the notes, and they swapped out the nectarine for apricot. So I'm gonna dig into these five notes, but overall, what I love about this, I, this is, you'll see some of these candles where I just kind of like sniff and fall into it because I just love it. Partially, I've been burning it for what, at this point, 12 years, so there's that nostalgia factor to it, but there's a reason I keep coming back to it because it is so, so good. And for me, it really is, you know, headline, a sparkling cranberry pear, kind of even cranberry pear beverage. Not quite champagne, but there's an effervescence to it. And I really appreciate effervescence when it's done well. A lot of times it can get a little too synthetic for me, which of course it is synthetic. There's not CO2 in here. There's not citric acid necessarily, you know, fizzing in your nose, like, like it's pop rocks or something, but a little bit of that effervescence that just kind of like sparkle in the, in the air, or just like it would bounce on your nose instead of on your tongue. 
really adds a fun festive vibe. So for me, this is very much a New Year's candle. Sometimes I'll burn it in December, but really come, you know, New Year's, January 1st is when I really start burning cranberry purpolini, partially because it's a really fresh winter fruit blend with your cranberries and your pears. But that Bellini is going to add that sparkling, you know, some sort of sparkling wine, Prosecco, something like that. And it's fresh, it's sweet, it's balanced, it's better than peach Bellini, it's better than, for me, any other effervescent fragrance I've smelled in wax. And it's quite authentic, and it's sweet without being cloying, which is always the, the, the sweet spot, so to speak. So digging into the notes, and I'm gonna hold this one just because I, I think it's, I, I like the label better. <laughs> pear nectar, so this one I'm saying is probably your Anjou pear, really that all-purpose pear, juicy, subtle sweetness, and those hints at sort of a refreshing lemon-lime flavor. Because this is a very refreshing, bright, bubbly scent, it absolutely makes sense to have a bit of a citrus in here because they don't have a traditional citrus listed in the notes, though I think something's gotta live in there somewhere. Maybe it's just a, a lemon or a bergamot, perhaps. But with this, that nectar, it really is just the juice, cooked down, concentrated, no spices added to it, not the flesh, not really velvety, just the sweet, pear flavor itself. Then digging into cranberries. In this case, they say sparkling cranberries. S cranberries are going to be tart, tangy, fruity, tannic, bitter, sharp, sometimes red forest nuances to them, and unmistakably holiday. Now, sparkling can refer to sort of the freshness, the fact that these are uncooked berries, or maybe even that effervescence. Not quite sugared because they're not particularly sweet. Most of the sweetness I feel comes from the pear nectar, the, the reduced pear juices, but the cranberry is there as a fresh, bright, tart balance to the extreme sweetness of the pear nectar. Then we get into nectarine and apricot. So both stone fruits, quite similar. You could argue interchangeable. Maybe there's just one in there and they flipped them because of marketing, but let's assume positive intent that there is both a nectarine note and apricot note. And you've got your nectarine, so very, very similar to a peach. It really is that sweet, juicy, tangy note. A deep sweetness, very close to the peach, but more tangy, less powdery, creamy, velvety than you might get from a peach. And then apricot on the flip side is very creamy, sweet, and balanced of sweet and tartness. So there's a bit of tartness, but I mean, apricot, especially dried, is one of my favorite stone fruits and to eat and in fragrance. It just is so beautiful. And for New Year's Eve, I actually made a winter red sangria. And for that, I used a Rioja from Spain. I added a bit of brandy to it. And then I cooked down a simple syrup, which had dried apricots, Ceylon cinnamon sticks, and dried cranberries in them. So not this candle, though I admit I have duped this in Bellini or sangria forms in the past. But the apricot just adds such a warm, creamy tartness that is so pretty. I really urge you to try apricot in savory dishes, in sweet dishes, in nectar, in a beverage. It's just really, really, really nice. And you certainly get that in here. And then finally, black currant. So if you've watched some of the other 12 Days of Candles videos, I've talked about black currant in a few of those videos, especially I want to say in Magic Mistletoe, AKA Winter Garland. Now, black currant is going to be light, tangy, fruity, but still woody and almost that animalic kind of catty edge to it. And they say it's actually a really important note for creating green, minty, or fruity notes in perfumes. And if it's just the berry itself, it's gonna add a sweet, tart fruitiness, which aligns with cranberry and with this scent. So again, this is complex yet simple, this blend for me, because really on face value, it is a 50-50 tart cranberry and sweet pear nectar. But you have those stone fruits in the background, the creamy, tangy, velvety, to add an additional fresh juiciness. And the black currant adds a bit of a tang, a little something extra in there, still tart fruitiness. So you've got tart with your cranberries and your red currant, you've got sweet with your nectarine, your apricot, and your pear, and all put together with some citrus, I think, playing in the background, and that beautiful effervescence, but it is just this pretty light pink bubbly beverage and tends to be a powerhouse in performance and throw. This one I burned two or three times, really nice, even consistent burn. And it, I mean, it'll knock you out. You want this in a big space because it's going to be very strong in how it throws. So nothing wrong with that, right? That wraps up days eight and nine, our pair days from Slack & Co Homeworks and Slack & Co Bath & Body Works with the lovely Partridge in a Pear Tree and 
cranberry perbolini, which ones are your favorite? I'd, I'd love to know if you've smelled and burned both of them. For me, they're different enough that it's absolutely worth having them, but having either of them in the collection for me is definitely a, a win for the winter months. Let me know what you think of this and stay tuned for the last couple of videos coming up for the 12 Days of Candles. And until then, take care.